Hey guys, Yule here. So today I'm going to show you some garden updates. Um, here's the thing though, we had a really severe thunderstorm last night and a lot of the garden is flattened because of the high winds that we had. But there's still so many beautiful things that are blooming right now, so I don't want to miss them. Uh, so I decided to show it to you anyway. All right, I will start over here. And this part of the garden I call the sidewalk garden because this is our sidewalk. And if you're new to my channel, I do garden here a lot because this is the only part of the garden that receives full sun. So from here to about over there, this part of the garden receives at least six hours of sunlight. That's why it's so full of flowers. And this side right here is also called devil strip in our neck of the woods. Um, in other areas, sometimes they call it the hell strip and it is the area between the sidewalk and the road. And um, the other side right there is our flower border. So here's the Cleome and Cleome starts to look really bad <laughs> as it gets later in the day because they really do not like the heat and they hold up better in the shade. You see how they start to crinkle, but they look absolutely beautiful in the morning and in the afternoon. Uh, this is a Dahlia Tsukiyori no Shisha, which I absolutely love. It's a, one of the lacy Nieda Dahlias. They have very beautiful like cut um, petals right there. This phlox right there is uh, Franz Schubert. It's one of the best phloxes from, uh, for our area because it doesn't get mildew. And it is absolutely beautiful. That lilac color is gorgeous. Now this right here is double click Cosmos that I started winter sewing this spring. And they look absolutely beautiful. It's a little double Cosmos. And as you can see, I repeat the Dahlia right here. That flux right there is uh, Nikki, and it's another beautiful flux. This plant is Ikium Blue Better, and it is one of the plants that I unboxed in the video from Annie's Annuals and Perennials. This is uh, just a beautiful little plant, very drought tolerant. And that's one thing about the Devil Strip is that it requires a lot of really tough plants because the soil here is very poor and it is very dry during summer and then also in the winter it gets snow load and a lot of salt. So you either have to select plants that are okay with those conditions or grow annuals that are super, super tough, like the Ikium, for example. And right here we have Blue Boy Bachelor's Buttons. They're about done because it is really hot and they do not like this hot and humid weather. But that blue is just amazing. There's some, um, there's another Dahlia. This is Zirconia. This grass is a switch grass, which is a wonderful native grass, and I planted it with Alauna claridalia. This little area I worked on uh, a couple of weeks ago, I actually divided this iris. It was all the way up to here, and it was just a little bit too much, so I divided it and I gave it away, and I planted another phlox that is not doing that hot. But this area right here I absolutely love and so do the pollinators this agastache or agastache however you say it is such a huge pollinator attractor and I love the minty smell of it myself I would walk by and just crush a couple of leaves and just smell them it's uh, just such a pleasant fragrance this is uh, Stachys humulo, and it's about done blooming, and it was also a huge pollinator attractor. It still is. There's all sorts of wasps and bees and flies that love to pollinate it. As you can see, the more shade this area re it receives, the better Cleomi does. Like, look at this. Um, here's a very cool plant. This is Echinops. And when it's not blooming, it looks like a wild thistle. And then the blooms show up and they're just the coolest things. 
there's a little bit more right here. So right here, I have all these echinaceas that actually self-seeded. Um, and what I find is that my self-seeded echinacea does so much better than the cultivated varieties. Um, my cultivated varieties usually peter out uh, in about a couple of years. These lasted for like over five years here already. And they're very prolific bloomers. Alauna Clairdalia. And uh, huge pollinator attractors too. So let me just quickly go to the other side. And I'm sorry you guys if you hear the lawn mowers because my neighbors are mowing their lawn. This plant right here is a Veronicostrum, which is a really cool native plant. Um, huge pollinator attractor. It's about to bloom. And over here is hollyhocks. I absolutely love them. Um, they were completely on the ground after yesterday's storm, so I had to stake them today. But they're so worth it, you guys. They're just like little fluffy pink puffs. Oh, so um, hollyhocks are biennials, so they will grow the first year and then they bloom the second year and then they self-seed and die. Um, so mine do get rust. I get that question all the time. So you see right here, these little orange dots. This is rust. Um, you can prevent it by spraying it with copper fungicide um, if you go in the organic route. But in my area, it is so hard to control it anyway. And these guys, after they're done blooming, will die anyway. I just kind of skip the spraying. This area right here is um, all phlox. And I Chelsea chopped this phlox this spring. Uh, so basically what Chelsea chop is, is um, reducing your plant size by about a third. So it is more prolific and it is a little bit shorter because um, some phloxes tend to flop. But um, the side effect or the downside is that they will actually bloom a little bit later in the season, which is okay with me. This plant I get a lot of questions about. This is Philippendula and it is very pretty. Look at these fluffy blooms. So Philippendula is a native plant. It is a little bit aggressive, so you have to keep an eye on it if you decide to plant one. Um, if you do have an area that you want to cover, especially a wet area, it will help you out, but you cannot plant it with plants that are a little bit more mild mannered uh, because it will take over. So I do control this plant once a year. In the spring, I cut about a third of it and I throw it away, but I just love the flowers. They're so pretty. There's another one right here. So it is down from our um, storm last night, but it usually stands at about over six feet tall with these absolutely gorgeous blooms. Right here, I have um, some Nicotiana. This is the winter sown Nicotiana right here. Uh, I interplanted it with some Euphorbia Diamond Frost and there's some balloon flower over there. These look super healthy. Um, so this part of the border does not receive as much sun as the devil strip. So I go with things that can tolerate that a little bit better. This plant right here is um, Eupatorium or Jopai weed. It's about to bloom a huge pollinator attractor too. And I just wanted to show you this rose right here. Um, this is David Austin Mary Rose. And um, it bloomed earlier in the spring around May time. And then I decided to cut it in half and it bloomed again. It flushed out again. It has buds. It's absolutely beautiful. It looks very healthy. So I've never um, done that before. I've never uh, cut a rose right after it blooms. So you can potentially get another flush of blooms.
which is amazing. Uh, the elephant ears are starting to come in. You know how excited I am about that. This little plant right here is Browalia. And Browalia is another one of those plants that can bloom in part shade. And this is what this area is here. And I interplanted it with Euphorbia Diamond Frost. Look at these beautiful little blue flowers. A little bit more of the elephant ears here. Franz Schubert, absolutely beautiful phlox. Forgot to mention this echinacea right here, which is echinacea pallida. It is totally down from the storm last night, but I love this. I love the uh, very thin petals that are downward pointing, uh, big cones on this one. And it is really tall. Like, look how tall that is. It's about five-ish feet tall. I started it from seed last uh, year and it bloomed finally this year. So it, it does take about two years to bloom, but it's totally worth it. Uh, also a pollinator attractor. And if you leave the uh, cones for the winter, uh, goldfinches will get them. And here's an update on the patio. And if you have been following me on Instagram, you probably have seen the gazillions of photos that I've been posting while working on the space. So basically what we did, we cleaned up this travertine tile here that is over 11 years old. It was super dirty. Uh, so we basically used a metal brush to clean every single one of these tiles and then power washed it. It looks so much better. And then what I did, I added tons of pots with um, tropical plants. I always wanted to have something in this corner because it was pretty much bare. Um, and then we have the uh, fence and the forsythia hedge. And I really needed something. So the idea was to add these tall pots right here because when you're sitting and if you have tall pots, the flowers are pretty much in your face and um, you can experience them in a totally different way. Also, I have a lot of tropicals. As you know, I overwinter a lot of elephant ears. So most of these elephant ears, I overwintered in my basement. So let's just start right here. Um, this elephant ear is heart of the jungle and is absolutely beautiful. I'm sorry about the dog, neighbor's dog barking. Um, it has this really cool underside and a black stem. This elephant ear is coffee cups. It collects water in here after the rain, which is absolutely beautiful. Then I have some um, elephant ears, Calacasia esculenta, that I actually planted directly in the ground instead of planting in the pot. I just wanted to see how it's going to do. And um, actually, that's one of the reasons why I planted a lot of these plants in pots is because this forsythia hedge is pretty competitive with other plants and has a lot of roots right here. So it was kind of hard to dig. So then I also have um, hydrangeas because this little corner right here gets at least six hours of sunlight. And as if you watched my app video, you guys saw that. I actually was filming it right here. So I have some hydrangeas paniculatas. There is a helichrysum in this pot. And um, then this pot is probably my favorite. I have this elephant ear that I bought in the nursery this year. This is one of the few ones that I bought. This is called black coral. It is the darkest elephant ears that I've ever seen. This is a flax right here. Um, there's a bunch of dichondras that I actually planted um, in almost all of these pots to sort of connect this composition and uh, Senecio angel wings, which is not doing great in our climate because it doesn't like the humidity and heat too much. This um, elephant ear here is Aloha and I started it from Corms this spring. And the Aloha is underplanted by uh, Streptocarpola, which is a brand new plant for me this year. I found it uh, in one of the local nurseries and I absolutely adore it. It has these beautiful little blue flowers. 
and I just wanted to plant it in every pot. And uh, from what I've seen, it actually uh, will fill in a lot in the pot by the end of the summer. It's just beautiful. This um, elephant ear right here is mojito and I've had it for years and I actually have been overwintering it in the house and keeping it as house plant. And it's underplanted by uh, Browalia Endless Illumination. This little pot right here, I absolutely love. Um, it has Tritiscancy, it has Streptocarpola, and it has this plant here that I bought in the nursery, it didn't have a tag. I still am trying to figure out what it is. It could be Helichrysum, it could be Artemisia, it could be Lavender. So I'm still trying to figure out what it is. And um, all of the other plants here, again, have dichondra, but I wanted to show you this beautiful begonia. This is Jurassic Rex, and it goes amazing with this black coral elephant ear. And of course, the contrast in silver and darker colors, great. The hydrangea here with uh, some Euphorbia diamond frost. And these pots all have the um, elephant ears that I overwintered in the basement. They're doing amazing. I'm actually so surprised how well they're doing in pots because I haven't grown them in pots a lot, but the leaves are huge. I don't see a lot of difference in the size right now. And I just underplanted it with some uh, Browalia, Dichondra, some uh, Euphorbia Diamond Frost, and the same in this pot over here. So you sort of see all these different textures that look so beautiful together. Um, there's another elephant ear here, uh, one more heart of the jungle. This one is a little bigger than the one that I showed you. And look at the black stems on this one. Isn't this so beautiful? Uh, there's one more uh, little pot that I planted. This is a hanging pot with a Dichondra Silver Falls. I just hung it on the tree. I thought it was just a little interesting moment in the garden. And um, this is pretty much what has been done this spring. I love it. I love how it's filling in. Um, it made a huge difference in the space. I needed that additional layer of plants. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoy these garden updates and learn something new. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.